right, so the first step, depending on what kind of grapes you're using, uh, you're going to have to sanitize your fermenter and you're gonna have to get your grapes ready. So I have frozen grapes for this particular uh, winemaking experience because I um, it's my first time and I just wanted to make it as easy as possible. I didn't wanna buy a distemmer and kind of crush up the grapes until I know what I'm doing. So I have some frozen grapes. The other thing you're gonna need is some food grade like cleaners, stuff that's for uh, industrial uh, food kitchens, things like that. So this is Star Sanitizer, Star San, and uh, I've heard people use Be Bright Cleanser, so some sort of sterilizer, and that's important to make sure that everything is pure in your wine. I've definitely read a lot about cleaning the products and making sure that you rinse all the residue as well. So that's the first step. So I bought this uh, five gallon anvil fermenter and it comes with a spout. Um, it's brand new and it could be used for beer as well. So I bought my frozen grapes um, from wine.com, very simple. So this is a 2020 harvest from Livermore Valley, California. It's a Cabernet, so I'm gonna be making a little Cabernet wine. and assembled my new fermenter. So this is, like I said, a five gallon fermenter. This is five gallons worth of frozen grape must. Uh, apparently it makes about three and a half to four gallons of wine. So basically that could come down to about 15 to 20 bottles of red wine. Let's take a look at this frozen must. So. It is. You can see there's still got kind of like stems and stuff in there. That's your cab must. So we're gonna put that now in there. So yeah, it's still frozen in the midway down. That's where all the juice is. We're gonna start transferring it. Oops. Okay, so I've emptied this five gallon bucket into the fermenter. So stirring it up a little bit so it does have a little bit of debris depends on the kind you get so this is more you know crushed so another thing I did is I added potassium metabisulfite which is an antioxidant and it kills any bacteria or wild yeast that could be on the skins so there's uh, sodium metabisulfite as well and a couple other Camden ta tablets and things like that um, so I put a quarter teaspoon in and I sprinkle it around. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. All right, so I got the uh, wines transferred into my fermenter. Um, I'm going to let them sit for 24 hours. I added the so, uh, potassium metabisulfite. So I mixed it up and I'm going to leave it for about 24 hours or so. And then tomorrow I'm going to test the wine for bricks level um, and pH levels. So I have a hydrometer, I've never used it, so I'm gonna check it out. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so it is day two. This is what it looks like. Again, I didn't start the fermentation process. I just let it kind of sit. Um, I mixed it a little bit. The only thing I put on it was the potassium metabisulfite to kind of kill some of the bacteria that might be in it or um, the wild yeast. So now I'm going to test the bricks, which is the sugar level. So I have a beaker that I filled up with some of the wine juice. So, you know, you can kind of see the color. And if I keep it in here a little longer with the skins and things, it can get a better coloring. So, so this is a hydrometer, which can test the sugar content of the grape juice. And it will allow us to know what our alcohol content will be in the wine. So let's test it out. All right, so this is the hydrometer testing the bricks level and of our Cabernet juice. And it looks like it's 25 bricks. So that's pretty good. That would be like 12 and a half percent alcohol or so. All right, so it's been 24 hours since my grapes have been kind of settling. So now I'm gonna make a starter yeast. 
All right, so um, there's a couple ways you can kind of start the fermentation process with the wine. You can just sprinkle the yeast right on the must and let it sit in and start doing its thing, or you can create a starter yeast, or you can hydrate it. I'm gonna create a starter yeast. So I have a, a pint of the grape juice, the Cabernet grape juice that I got from my uh, container. I have a thermometer because it's supposed to be, you're supposed to add the yeast at 105 to about 109 degrees. So I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna bring this to a boil to kill any kind of impurities. And then I'm gonna add this when it gets to about 105 degrees. So the wine was boiled to about 180 degrees. So I'm gonna let it cool down to about 110. All right, so I'm gonna use BM45, which is one of the many yeasts that you can use for a red wine. So I have eight ounces here, which is enough for eight gallons. I don't have that much, so I'm going to, you know, put in as much yeast for about five gallons of wine, which is about one and three quarter teaspoon of uh, dry, you know, measurements. So I'm just going to sprinkle it over. The wine uh, temperature is supposed to be uh, below 105 degrees. So you don't want to put it, you don't want to put the yeast in there if it's over like 120 degrees, that'll kill the yeast. So they say about 105, 110 or like 90, that kind of range for the yeast. All right, so this is the first teaspoon. I'm just gonna sprinkle it. Let it, let it do its thing. All right, so I put my yeast in. I'm gonna check back in a couple hours. Um, I've read it could be as early as four hours all the way through 24 hours. That you wanna let this sit and kind of bubble and fester. Um, and then once it's kind of stops bubbling, that's when you wanna put it into your must. All right, so this is the yeast. I let it sit overnight. So you can see it's kind of foaming up. So I'm gonna add this to the grape must and start the fermentation process. So I'm also going to add my nutrient. Um, I've got Fermaid K. Um, there's a couple other yeast nutrients you can buy, but I bought the Fermaid K. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of this to the uh, starter yeast right here and then I'm going to add a little bit more to the uh, grape must. So it says one gram per gallon for the uh, the amount of gallon of grape must so I have five gallons so I'll do five grams. All right so right before I add my starter you know fermentation the starter yeast um, and the Fermaid K I just want to steep a little bit kind of push it down and just kind of loosen it up a little bit. Not necessarily mix it like crazy. So the, the skins are very important in the beginning stage and oxidation, like the getting oxygen in here is okay in the beginning stages. I also read that oxygen is actually good after you pitch the yeast, which means Pitching the yeast is putting the starter or the yeast into the grapes to start the fermentation process. So after I pitch it, I also read that, uh, you know, it can be exposed to oxygen for up to five days. So, you know, if you, if you do have it just kind of covered in the beginning while it's fermenting to check it and stuff, um, it's okay. But after five days of fermentation, you definitely We'll have to put the airlock on here and seal it up pretty good. Okay, so for a very important step, I'm going to pitch the yeast. I'm going to put my BM45 starter yeast into the grapes. Uh, I let this sit for about 12 hours. Sometimes the packages or the directions for starter yeast say kind of leave it for up to 48 hours but you definitely want it at least eight hours or so um, and you know as it's foaming and stuff like that. I also added the Fermade K in here as well so it's got a starter uh, yeast nutrient in there so I'm just gonna pour it in here we're gonna start fermentation.
So at this point, we've started the, the official uh, fermentation process for the wine. So it's going to start converting the sugar into alcohol. Um, so that's this process right here. And uh, you want to store the, the grape must and the fermentation liquid around uh, 65 to 85 degrees. You don't want it to be hotter than that consistently or cooler than that. So you want a nice uh, even temperatured room, maybe um, a closet, a garage, a basement, right? Um, obviously people have wine cellars and things like that, but you want a controlled kind of um, temperature for this process. So you want to keep this in, its, in a place it's going to be for a while. So the wine has been fermenting for, um, you know, about I don't know, 15 hours or so. So I'm going to steep it, which is just kind of like poke it down a little bit, kind of not necessarily mix it up, just kind of push things down and making sure that the liquids can kind of get all the way to the bottom. I suppose it's going to help with color, kind of get the yeast all over the place, and kind of break that film. So it's definitely fermenting, which is a good thing. Um, I'm going to add just a tad bit more yeast. Um, adding, you can be a little bit less than the recommended for yeast or a little bit more. Uh, you don't want to go crazy, but because yeast is going to multiply. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Okay, so I've filled the airlock to the max line with distilled water, and I'm going to put it onto the fermenter. So you can, um, the reason that you put these airlocks on is because once the wine starts to ferment after like the fifth day of fermentation, you do not want oxygen to reach the wine, so it's very important that it's secure and sealed. Um, now, when the yeast is making, converting the sugar into um, alcohol, it's going to release gas, and that's what this is for. So um, the gas will come through, and it will go through the top, and this will bubble a little bit so that I know that it's releasing gas. And uh, you just want to make sure that this is full so you can make sure that fermentation is still happening. So we are all set um, with the first phase of fermentation. We're going to let this guy ferment for about um, six days from now. It, you know, I've read five to nine days you want it to kind of ferment. Um, after the fifth day, you do not want to expose this to oxygen or, you know, splash it around. You want to keep it kind of sitting. Um, you want it into a nice, comfortable temperature, you know, 70 to 80 degrees, something like that, um, if possible. So find a spot, just let it be. Um, in the first couple days, you can you can punch down. You can take the top off and kind of gently punch down and kind of just move it around a little bit. Don't stir vigorously, but you can still do that for the first couple days, um, you know, to help kind of mix things around and get it going. But we're gonna... So as you can see, it's bubbling quite a bit. That means the carbon dioxide is trying to escape. That's good, it's fermenting pretty hardcore. As this starts to slow down, we'll come back and we will um, start putting some of this in the carboys and then we'll do another um, press to try to get some more wine out. Okay, so it's been uh, a little over five days of the initial fermentation stage and I'm testing the bricks level to make sure that the bricks are going down and the hydrometer has and the hydrometer has sunken all the way uh, because the sugar has been eaten up by the yeast and it becomes alcohol. And that's what you want with fermentation. So there's less density in there. So it's a little thinner. So it looks like it is about time to kind of transfer the initial fermentation into my first carboy and then finish pressing. Okay, so I am going to start my first racking off the primary fermentation. So I have a clean five gallon glass carboy, which I'm going to transfer all the free floating liquid um, to start. And then I'm gonna to have to press in there to get some additionally out. So I'm just gonna let it kind of fill up. I finally got the siphon working. So our carboy is being filled. We'll see how much 
free flowing juice we have. So I was having trouble um, with the straining because it got clogged there. My siphon wasn't working good, so I'm improvising. So um, I poured in, you know, some of the grapes through the strainer, which all everything's been sterilized and cleaned. Um, so I poured in there, so I have it leaking out there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the grapes into this and I'm gonna smash them up and then restrain them and keep doing that until I get as much juice as possible out of these grapes. And then it's gonna go finish that carboy off. So I don't have a grape press, so I'm improvising again. I'm using a potato masher that's been sterilized and I'm just mashing this up. Again, I'm not a professional. So just trying to get more juice out of these grapes. If you have a wine, a grape press, it's obviously a lot easier, but they are expensive. Okay, so um, I'm done with all the pressing and I have about three and a quarter gallons of Cabernet wine juice right now. So because I um, probably expose a lot of this to oxygen and it's kind of on the fence of the primary fermentation stage, I'm gonna add just a little bit of potassium metabisulfite. I added some of this in the beginning when the grapes were thawing to kill off wild yeast. Now it's really to um, take away the oxygen in there and kind of as an antibacterial uh, kind of agent, just in case, because um, you know it's still early on. I'm not gonna put a lot. I'm only gonna put like less than a quarter teaspoon of this stuff. It is, um, you know, you wanna be careful with this stuff. Just uh, you wanna put as little as possible in there, but it will help your wine stay fresh. It's almost necessary as a homemade uh, wine. So you, there's also Camden tablets or uh, sodium metabisulfite. So I'm gonna add a little bit. So again, a little less than a quarter teaspoon. Just gonna sprinkle that in there. Okay, I got my airlock all filled with distilled water. I'm going to put this on snugly. All right, and now um, we're gonna let this sit for about a month, uh, four to five weeks or so, and then we're gonna siphon it again. It's called the racking. We're gonna rack it into another clean carboy um, to kind of separate it from the sediment because all the sediment should kind of sink to the bottom and then we'll siphon it onto the next carboy. So I'll see you guys in a month. All right, so the wine's been sitting for about four weeks and it has some sediment built up. Um, this is called lees, L-E-E-S. It's basically like dried, dead yeast or not active yeast that's extra and it kind of floats to the bottom or floats around the top. So that's the main reason why we rack. So this is gonna be my second racking. The first one was the main must fermentation into this carboy. And now I'm gonna do another rack into the second carboy. Okay, so for my second rack, I'm actually gonna add some oak chips. I have American oak chips, so I have about three and a half gallons, so I'm gonna add just a little over um, an ounce of these wood chips, but I'm going to boil them in distilled water to kill off any wild yeast or bacteria. So I'm gonna boil them first, and then I'm gonna add them to the carboy for the second racking. All right, so I got my wood chips. Boiling water. Gonna let that go for about, I don't know, five to ten minutes to kill everything. All right. So I have a clean, sterilized second carboy with my wood chips that have been boiled and sanitized. So do you guys see that little sediment film on the bottom? That's the lees. And you can see like little particles. So that's why we have to rack the wine to kind of continue to separate the, the clear liquid from that sediment. So I'm siphoning all the wine from one carboy to the other. So you want to make sure you elevate the carboys. You want the one that you're pouring into on the bottom, right below the top it just makes the siphon a little easier so now we wait you don't want to splash the wine around because then it gets uh, oxygen but I'm gonna add a little potassium metabisulfite just to be sure um, and 
you know, I would do that as a first time homemade, you know, winemaker, especially. So you can see the wood chips. And I'm trying to separate the Lee's sediment from the first carboy to the second. So this is the second racking again. All right, so I've completed my second siphon slash rack. And you can notice that there's no sort of sediment at the bottom. It's a little bit more clear. You have the wood chips in there. So that's what those that little debris is. It's the wood chips. I have American oak chips. So I'm going to let this sit for about um, three weeks or so. And then I'll see how it looks in terms of sediment. And then I might do a third racking or I might bottle the wine. So we'll see how it looks. Okay, so the wine has been fermenting and um, I'm going to do my preparation for the final racking which goes into the bottles. So I have my um, natural wine course that I purchased. These are number eights. You want to either have number eight or number nine corks um, depending on the wine bottle you use. But I'm going to use refurbished uh, regular wine bottles. So I bought some eights. A couple things you need to do when uh, preparing your corks. Um, you need to kind of disinfect or just make sure there's no wild yeast or bacteria or anything on the natural corks. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Number one, you can soak this overnight in a solution of uh, sodium metabisulfite. Um, you don't want to soak it too long because you don't want it to get mushy. The other thing you can do if you're in a time crunch is kind of boil some water, then remove the heat, remove it from heat, put the corks that you want to use in there and cover it up and let it kind of steam cook a little bit for about two to three minutes. No more than that. You just want it just to be a tad bit softer, but you want to make sure that the corks are disinfected. So for my uh, homemade wine, I'm going to use regular uh, wine glasses, 780 milliliters. So the first thing I need to do is disinfect with regular you know, dish soap, and then I'm going to use star sand. a little bit of soap in there and we're going to rinse it make sure all the debris and all the wine is out of there before we officially sanitize it. And you want to get all the soap residue out of there before you even use the final sanitizer. All right so I've been using star sanitizer mixed dilution and I've been pouring them into the jugs after I've kind of washed them with the dishwasher detergent kind of shaking a little bit so you have to let it kind of be wet and sit in there for at least a minute and then I'm gonna pour it out and then um, it says you don't have to rinse but I always rinse it but I use kind of either distilled water to rinse or boiled tap water just to give it a quick rinse and then you let it air dry okay so in prepping the corks I want to take boiling water I'm gonna remove it from the heat So I removed it, and then I'm going to put my corks in there, and just kind of let them. All right, so I'm going to let, I'm going to put the top on, and let them steam for two minutes. All right, so after about two or three minutes, they're a little bit just soft on the outside, but you know still hard on the inside. But they should be disinfected. So before I do my final. Racking into the bottles for storage. I'm going to add a little bit more of the potassium metabisulfite. It's very important to add the sulfites if you're using sulfites right when you get the grapes and the must when you're trying to kill the yeast before you ferment. And then the second most important time is right before bottling. So I'm going to add a little dose and I'm going to gently stir it to not, you know, stir up any sediment. All right, so I'm going to start the siphoning process. So you always want to get the carboy a little higher. So I want to siphon it on its side to limit and not disturb the wine so it has less of a chance for oxidation.
for the corking process. You want it about two inches from the top of the neck to allow room for the cork. So I'm gonna start corking um, and try to get these 15 bottles all corked up and ready to go. First bottle. All right, so at the end of the final rack, I have 14 bottles of 780 milliliters of wine, Cabernet Sauvignon. So you're supposed to keep these upright for three days. So I'm um, gonna keep them just like this for three days and then I'm gonna lay them on their side. Or if you have a wine rack, you wanna put them into the wine rack to age. Now you can drink it now. So I'm gonna go try some, um, but the longer you age it, you know, the better. So um, up to a year at least is recommended. All right, so um, this whole process from getting the grape must to putting it into the final racking and bottling took about two months. I got it in mid-October and now it is mid-December and I've put the wine in the bottles for its final rack. Um, so I ended up getting 14 bottles of cab out of the five to six gallon grape must that was frozen. So I didn't have a full wine press. If I had a wine press, I would have gotten more juice and have more wine. Um, in addition, I probably spilled a bottle trying to uh, siphon it into the bottles. So if you're gonna do this and you're gonna continue to do it, it's worth it to invest in a siphon. I had some siphon troubles, no doubt, really annoying. So look into different siphons and it's worth spending extra money, that would be my advice. So let's test this out. This is only two months old, but let's test it out. That's actually pretty good. I'm not kidding. Very fruity, good color. Um, you know, obviously it's gonna mellow out a little bit, and um, but it doesn't have that much of an alcohol taste, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I put uh, American oak chips in it for about three and a half weeks, so. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this homemade wine making video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave me a like. Thanks for watching.